Greetings, friends. This is Mark David, founder of the Institute for the Psychology of Eating. Today's topic, how to understand all of nutritional science. Now, that sounds like a pretty big promise, doesn't it? When I think about it, it really is. But I'm going to do my best to make good on that promise. So in five minutes or less, I'm going to outline some important and fundamental distinctions that will help you look at the science of nutrition and all the information that you're constantly exposed to in a whole new way. You will have more insight, clarity, less confusion, and a greater sense of empowerment. In fact, you'll probably have more understanding of the field of nutrition in the broadest sense than a lot of experts in the field do. So let's get going. First, let's take a big picture look at the field of nutrition. And here's what I want to say about it. It's the Wild West. It's a young science, meaning nutrition is still developing and we still have our training wheels on when it comes to truly understanding the depth of the nutritional process. Experts disagree, and it's okay. In fact, for every PhD, there's an equal and opposite PhD, meaning we will always find opposing viewpoints even when you're not looking for them. No field in science operates with universal agreement. That is just the way it is. You need to build up your tolerance for disagreement in the scientific professions. Now, scientists can be very passionate, very religious, and very dogmatic. Scientists are just like you and me. They're human beings. Be patient with them, love them, thank them for their hard work and their passion, and please don't be intimidated by them. Next, nutrition is vastly influenced by personal preference, by scientists who are sometimes fallible. I want to tell you a story. When I was in college in the 1970s, I interned at Sloan Kettering Cancer Institute in New York City. I was very fortunate to be working on the most famous floor in their research laboratories. Every scientist on this floor was a well-known name in cancer research. It was an exciting time for me. I learned a lot and I had the opportunity to be up close and personal with some great scientific minds. There was one particular scientist who I would run errands for who especially took a liking to me. He was fascinated by all the strange foods that I would eat. And when I say strange foods, I'm talking about sprouts on my salad and seaweed and odd looking organic dried fruit from the health food store and my little green drinks. Actually, I think he was less fascinated and more amused. And he truly thought I was a nutritional buffoon and he had no hesitation to tell me so. He was so convinced that food had little to no effect on health and that any scientist who was studying the role of nutrition in cancer was wasting valuable money and resource. You know, what I love most about him was that he would pontificate about all of this while drinking about seven or eight Diet Cokes every day. As I observed him, he was addicted. In fact, I can tell when he was coming down off his Diet Coke high. He'd get moody, he'd get irritable, he'd be forgetful. I have to go into the lobby and get another can of Diet Coke from the machine. So think about it for a moment. He had a personal relationship with food and personal beliefs about it that dramatically impacted, and in this case limited, his scientific approach. Now, back to our important distinctions to help us understand all of nutritional science. Today's nutrition facts are often tomorrow's fallacies. In other words, many of the nutritional injunctions you hear about likely have a brief shelf life. We used to think margarine was good for you. We thought sugar was great. We thought that high carbohydrates and low protein and low fat was the best diet to follow. We thought it was okay to put artificial colors in our food. We thought that all protein was the same and all fat was the same. So it's probably helpful to not get too attached to whatever nutritional facts you believe are immutable and permanent and applicable to all people all the time. So my friends, understand this. Humans are still growing and evolving, and so is our nutrition. 
So it makes perfect sense that science will continue to change because the universe, the solar system, the Earth for goodness sakes, and all its creatures and organisms are in a fantastic state of flux and unfoldment and evolution. Next, it's also quite useful to note that innovation in the field of nutrition often comes from the outside meaning most of what you might practice when it comes to what you eat and the healthy foods that you purchase didn't originate in some high-end scientific laboratory or in the hallowed halls of some Ivy League school. Nutrition and dietary innovation is largely a grassroots affair. I'll give you some examples. Macrobiotics, the Atkins diet, the Mediterranean diet, the Pritikin diet, the Zone diet, the Paleo diet, veganism, raw foods, cleansing programs, orthomolecular nutrition, the use of supplements and herbs, all of these were brought to you by outsiders, some through ancient wisdom, some from people who have no formal university and scientific education, and some from doctors and experts who were considered to be on the quack-like fringe. So here's the bottom line. There is a whole spectrum of nutritional systems that can work for people depending on their age, their health, their genetics, the environment, the season, personal preferences, lifestyle, cultural preferences, so much more. The perfect diet likely does not exist and it's always a moving target in terms of what works best for any one person at any time. So what I'm saying to you is relax into the uncertain turf of nutrition. Do your best to be okay about living in uncertain nutritional times. Let the evolution of nutrition be what it is. Stop moaning and groaning that everybody says something different when it comes to the best nutritional approach. Welcome the craziness of it all, celebrate it, smile at it, contribute your two cents to any argument, and have yourself a meal that feels really good. I hope this was helpful, my friends. To learn more, go to psychologyofeating.com. The Institute for the Psychology of Eating offers the most innovative and inspiring professional trainings, public programs, conferences, online events, and much more. Through our Eating Psychology Coach Certification Training, you can grow a new career and help your clients break through the most compelling eating challenges of our times. If you're focused on your own eating and health, the Institute offers a great selection of one-of-a-kind opportunities to take a big leap forward in your relationship with food. We are proud to be international leaders in online and live educational events that are designed to create the breakthroughs you want most. Our professional and public programs are powerful, results-oriented, and embrace all of who we are as eaters. I'm talking body, mind, heart, and soul. For questions, you can always email us at info at psychologyofeating.com. We'll be sure to get back to you real soon. This is Mark David, founder of the Institute for the Psychology of Eating. Thank you so much for your time and interest.